right, let's rank another soundtrack. Since I did DuckTales on the NES a few months back, might as well cap off the series by doing DuckTales 2. Like always, this will be just the stage themes. Like in the original DuckTales, there are five stages, five main stages, but there is also actually the final stage, even though the stage lasts about eight seconds, and it's a rehash of the beginning of the Bermuda stage. It has a different theme song, unlike last time when Transylvania was recycled. So this time there are six themes to choose from and rank. And like always, I will preface this by saying that these rankings are just my opinion, not to be taken too seriously. If you agree or disagree, let your thoughts be known in the comments. I like to see what your take is on this music in comparison to my own. So let's get on with it. At number six, Move. This one's really peppy and upbeat. One of the happier songs that I've ranked so far, if not the most. It actually sounds more like a bonus stage than a traditional regular stage theme. And to me it sounds like a, uh, a game show theme song from the 1980s when everything was very energetic and vibrant. The problem with the song though is it's extremely repetitive. The percussion never changes, the riff is slightly altered throughout the song, but it really doesn't change all that much, and it also is hard to even really tell when the loop comes back to the beginning, not just because it's repetitive, but the end of the loop doesn't really have an ending, I guess. It just kind of, it feels to me like it's still in the middle of the sequence. It doesn't come to a conclusion or feel like it's wrapping up. It just kind of stops. And it's also short. I think it's only a couple of measures in the refrain. If you even want to call it a refrain, it's really more like a verse, another verse that's just daisy-chained on to the main one. I, this, it's, uh, this song doesn't do anything for me, really. It is plain and repetitive. At number five, Pirate Ship. It's the final stage theme, and like I mentioned in the intro, it's a very, very short segment. So you're probably not going to hear the song in the game for very long unless you stop and listen to it intentionally. So for that reason, it probably gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. It does start off a beat, kind of like Moo does in the whole, uh, I don't know, bonus stage realm. Although I'd say this song, uh, this this opening bit sounds more like, I don't know, like a cutscene or a bit of dialogue that would be going on rather than a stage. But unlike Moo, it does change. It does go into another segment. The bass riff gets pulsier, and the percussion changes, and the main riff gets more busy and the whole thing actually reaches a climax so it's way more complete of a song than Moo was but it's also not anything special it's pretty good it does sound different from really any other song in the series not just this soundtrack but it's got a different uh, vibe to it it's it's mood it's different I do like the fact that it stands out and is distinct, but it just kind of is what it is, and it doesn't sound like a pirate level at all. I know that it's not much of a level at all to begin with, but it takes place on a pirate ship, and it's a final stage. I would have thought that it would have sounded a little more foreboding than this. At number four, Scotland. The riff in the main verse is pretty cool. It's one of those just simple but effective hooky riffs. But the refrain isn't much of a payoff. It sounds more like a bridge that's leading into the main hook, but it doesn't. It goes back to the beginning, and it's also a little short. Again, kind of like Moo, refrain cuts off before it really should. And it also doesn't have a full sound. It actually is like this in a lot of the rest of the soundtrack, too. It feels like there's a lot of empty space. I think the sound could have been fattened up a little bit, or maybe another track could have been laid down to just kind of add a little bit of ambiance or, or something to just fill those gaps. This isn't one of those songs that benefits from having empty space, but I do think it's a pretty good song. Like I said, I like the main riff a lot. 
I just wish they would have made some other decisions with it. At number three, Niagara Falls. The riffs aren't particularly catchy or anything, but they're interesting. They they don't repeat much. The notes dance all over the scale. It holds your interest. The bass is pretty groovy. And I like the transitions quite a bit, too. It's just a good, solid song. And I tend to start the game on this stage just because the cursor happens to start off on Niagara Falls, and that's all the only reason, really. And to me, this song sounds like a good opener, like the first track on the soundtrack. So again, it's nothing particularly special, but from front to back, it's a good, solid song all the way through, with a lot of nice little nuances. At number two, Egypt. This is a dark, mid-tempo dirge. It sounds like it belongs with Castlevania. Or something like that. It's got this really brooding main riff. And I like how they revisit the riff in a couple different spots in different ways. There's a little breakdown toward the end before it comes back into the main riff. And I love how they bridge the gap with that little quick transition. There are actually quite a bit of sections to this song, and I like how they balance the simpler progression in the beginning along with a busier arrangement in, in the second half. Also, going back to what I was talking about, the empty space earlier in the ranking, this song kind of has a mix of both, and I think it works all the way through. The beginning has space, but I think it benefits the riff. I think because there is a lot of decay in the melody. So you can definitely afford to have space in there. And then when it gets to the second half of the song and things get a little bit busier, there is a second layered uh, synth track on top of the main riff. So it adds some drama to it. It's definitely one of the moodier, but still complex and seismographic in terms of tempo and overall feel it's got some variety to it i really considered putting this one at number one for a bit it's way closer to number one than it used to be i have definitely grown to enjoy this one more as time has gone at number one bermuda this was a close call between this and egypt for the number one spot but this one has always been my favorite. The riff is very simple, and there is a limited amount of changes. The refrain is kind of like an extended variation of the main riff in the verse, but it's not rep really repetitive either. It's just different enough to keep it from feeling kind of samey. There's just something about the groove. The rhythm section is the glue that holds it together, and the main riff is it draws me in, and, and it doesn't get old, even if it doesn't change a lot throughout the song. I've always felt that this kind of reminds me of The Doors. Like, I could have seen The Doors doing a rendition of it. They have a tendency to play patterns kind of similar to this one. So maybe that was a reason why I was drawn into this song so much. But it, I always have. I always... I was instantly a fan of Bermuda and continue to to this day. So that does it for this list. Here's a quick recap. At number six was Moo. Number five, Pirate Ship. Number four, Scotland. Number three, Niagara Falls. Number two, Egypt. And number one, Bermuda. So what did you think? What are your opinions? What are your rankings? What songs did you like? What songs did you not like? And how does it stack up against the first DuckTales soundtrack. I personally think there's a little more variety in terms of mood, but I think that the first one was definitely superior. And that will wrap up this edition of Ranking the Soundtrack. See you next time.